struggling day to day, wondering endlessly. Good evening, good evening. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Good evening, good evening. Can hear you pretty good. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. How are you doing, Sister Janine? Doing all right. All How right. I'm, I'm doing good, doing good. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. I received that. I found some arthritis pain medication at Kroger. It's straight up called arthritis pain medication. Okay. I have to get some. Yeah. Yeah. Lady at the job gave me a couple of hers. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I had some, uh, my, my, I don't think what, what's going on with me is arthritis more than it is just back spasms. I, I, um, I had to go to uh, what do you call the med clinic or the whatever right after uh, church on Urgent Sunday. Care. Urgent care. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, Janine, it was so it was so bad. Monday morning, I, I couldn't even dress myself. Angela had to Go dress ahead. me. And I, I mean, I'm doing a lot better now, but it was it was scary at one point. I couldn't stand I up or nothing. Yeah. 
So you didn't go to work that day. You went to urgent care. No, I went to I went to work that day. Wow. As soon as I, I, Sunday night, uh, Angela took me to urgent care, and then they gave they shot me uh, in the gluteus maxima, maximus maximus. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and gave me some pills. Yeah. And the next morning, it it had no effect, and but I I had Angela dress me, and I, and she got me off to work, and and you know as time went on, I I, I started feeling a little better. I'm I'm maybe. 55 to 60 percent right now okay yeah so i'm i'm, I'm doing better than I, I i keep saying i'm doing better than i did yesterday so i hear you yeah mm. but yeah i haven't had this level of pain and i want to say in maybe five to six years it was the exact same pain during the exact same time mm. um and you know and that time they gave me vicodin this time they didn't give me that so okay <laughs> But they gave me a shot in the butt, and I'm telling you, yeah, yeah. That, that bad boy hurt. I just <laughs> had the shots. Yes, <laughs> Lord. They got it at the biggest part they could. Yeah, I, I was like, y'all not gonna, y'all not gonna take me out for drinks or nothing. You just go, go take a shot. <laughs> Make you feel better. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yes. Glad you're feeling better, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Pastor, we're going to lift you up in prayer every morning. I appreciate until it. Things, until things do get better. Yes, sir. And I'm sure that they will also. Yes. For yes. me and that too, because I'm working on my knees. Mm. Go for the left one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you might need a quarter zone shot, Janine. Say what now? A quarter zone shot. <laughs> no, thank you. No, yeah, yeah. I, had I that heard in about 2014. Those. I heard about those. I mean, it, it worked when it, 2014, I got two of them. Okay. And, and, and I was able to handle it, but I don't want to do it again because of what it is. So, yeah. so this will, this too shall pass. Okay. And my healing too. It's it going to be much better. There it is. It has to be. Yes. Well, hey, I appreciate all of you uh, connecting. Uh, looks like uh, Patricia's uh, logging in as well. Uh, she immediately turned her camera off, so she must have <laughs> want us to see her. <laughs> now, I, I just left one meeting come to the meeting. It's like, oh, good God. I'm, I'm like, wow, that was quick. Hello, goodbye. Yeah. How are you feeling today? I'm, I'm, I'm doing better than I did yesterday. Okay, good, good. Each day is getting gooder and gooder. Don't you lift another thing. I, you know what? You, you're the 15th person that told me that, and I, I'm telling you, I'm listening this time. Oh, okay. Yes, Lord. So, yeah, we, and so, um, to your point so we finally got the keys patricia yes congratulations new neighbor thank you he, he literally oh. dropped them off 30 minutes ago here at the church oh, so, okay yeah yeah so uh we, we probably won't move in until next week but um let the movers move everything there yes ma'am yes ma'am <laughs> yes, ma so and that's what they're gonna do and uh so jay's uh i guess she has a bowling party uh at eight so we're gonna have uh no, wait a minute here's here's the wife right here hold on let me try you let me hold let me put you on yeah sorry about that that's the wife <laughs> all right so um we're, we're we're probably not going to uh go the full hour uh but uh our our lesson is uh dealing with chapter 23 and it's entitled the work so we're just going to uh, read this passage hi bring to the surface some of the things that we um wrestled with in uh, this study and then we'll be on our way so i'm going to open up with a word of prayer if you don't mind Father, our God, we thank you for uh, this opportunity that you have blessed us to come together through the aid of technology and to learn more about our responsibilities to you, to ourselves, and to the world. We pray, Lord, uh, during this journey uh, that we uh, are learning about the cost of discipleship, uh, that we wrestle with things that uh, we find in the text, uh, we wrestle with the scripture. 
uh, and we allow it to uh, change us even in those darkest areas of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for all of those who have joined with us on this journey, as well as those who may listen to this particular broadcast uh, at a later time during their convenience. Bless and increase according to thy will. And for that, Lord, we will be grateful to you. In your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, we ask all things. Let everyone say amen. Right. So it's it's interesting uh, because uh, we're, we're having Bible study here. You all are at your various uh, uh, destinations. And, and then there are people in the sanctuary right now as we speak, uh, praying on our behalf, uh, which is which is incredible. Uh, I uh, commissioned uh, individuals in the church to uh, come to the sanctuary uh, in quiet moments and lift up our church, lift up our children, our city, our community, um, and our, our clergy uh, in prayer. And so uh, it's, it's just awesome uh, that, 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 that uh, you know, when Jesus said no, this, this, this house is a house of prayer, uh, he meant that. And I just believe uh, that because it is a house of prayer, uh, uh, God will hear and answer our prayers. So, you know, the closer we get to him and, and where he is, the closer he, uh, he, he responds. So, yeah, that, that, that's just awesome um, that, you know, people are coming in uh, on various times of the day and just coming into the sanctuary in quiet moments and just praying. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. All right, so our lesson today is the 23rd chapter of, the, of our, yes, Sister Patricia. Without trying to take you off the mark, it just, I, have to, I have to ask this because I'm old and I have to do it when I remember it. There it is. Um, you know, you, you had mentioned the Daniel fast that you yes. want to start that. Are we going to have any time to sit and discuss as a church what that means and what that looks like? Um, how about I do this, Patricia? How about, oh, okay, okay so, okay, wait, let, let me, let me. Let me uh, follow up some questions. Are you saying to be to to describe in thorough form what the Daniel fast is, or to respond to specific questions? I think I'm saying both. Okay. Okay. W what I'll do is this: I will distribute in a day or two a thirty second video. Okay. Of what the Daniel fast is. And then I will distribute a 15 minute Google Meets where we all can get together and discuss or answer any questions about it. How about that? That, that works for me. Okay, cool. I'll do that. Cause that, yeah, yeah I, I think to your point, we probably need to do that. Um, I, I was under the impression that New Calvary has done this before. I was on the impression that this is not something that's new. Uh, we just haven't done it in a while. But even if that is the case, to your point, Patricia, you know, people, you know, want to, they may have some follow-up questions. They may, they may have not have done it last time and are interested in doing something or a modification of it um, to understand and glean the full point behind it. So, yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll record a video uh, probably today or tomorrow um, and, and, or share a video and then we'll uh, we'll discuss that. Okay, great question. A anyone else before we begin? All right, so our, our, our lesson, uh, and, and, and maybe I need to, uh, before we get into the lesson, kind of talk about uh, the, exp you know, we as a church, uh, New Calvary, all the members of New Calvary, um, those that are able, those that are medically able, uh, we are uh, taking a journey uh, through fasting and praying. And we're utilizing not only the Daniel fast, uh, but there are other derivatives of fasting uh, that we can do, especially for those who have uh, medical conditions where they cannot uh, uh, cannot not have food. But what we're doing is we're, we're, we're uh, in a time where I God has, you know, has laid upon my heart to uh, implore our our church as we walk into this new year uh, to consider a fast, 
because of the uh, challenges as well as victories that we uh, are about to face in 2022. Uh, we want to make sure that we seek God in every decision, everything, uh, every challenge, every victory uh, that we face. And so, you know, it's it's been laid upon my heart to share this with New Calvary. And I'm just kind of hoping that a good majority of us can do that. Now, obviously, you know, some people can't do a, a food fast. So, I'm, you know, uh, you can uh, give up for 40 days social media, give up 40 days, um, you know, any, you know, uh, television, uh, give up 40 days, uh, you know, just something that you value, you, you spend an absorbent amount of time doing and replace that time in with time with God. And I have distributed uh, 40 days of, of, a, of a reading uh, as, uh, you know, as a, as a manual or something of that nature to just kind of read and encourage with you on the way. I've also encouraged individuals to partner with others um, uh, during this particular fast. Um, so, you know, just something for us to do, because uh, I'm, I'm excited about 2022 personally, uh, as, as well as as a leader uh, of New Calvary. I'm excited about New Calvary's future. I don't know what it is, uh, but but there's a level of euphoria that I'm feeling uh, that's in store for us in 2022. Um, and I want us to be ready for it. I want us to not have anything to prevent us from uh, uh, experiencing uh, the full fullness of joy that God has for us in 2022. And this may be a, a, a method of, uh, of of cleansing for us, uh, physical uh, as well as spiritual uh, cleansing, um, you know, mode of healing. I mean, with, with this vaccination that's going on, it, I think it's incumbent that we really uh, uh, put uh, our, our, our physical health in the forefront. Um, the unfortunate reality is this this vaccination as well as uh, some of the variants uh, hit, hits our hits our community harder than anything else and a lot of it has to do with pre-existing conditions that we have so maybe this could be a fast uh, to not only draw us closer to the lord but to prov you know to uh, eradicate those things that inhibit us from from giving uh, this temple uh, in, in its full in its fullness uh, to to god and worship so that, that that's my thought on that all right, Michaela's coming on in. All right, so our lesson today is coming from uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse five and verse six. And it reads as follows. These 12 Jesus sent forth and charged them saying, go not into any way of the Gentiles and enter not into any city of Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then Eugene Peterson's uh, translation um, of Matthew uh, chapter 10, I'm going to read verse five uh, and probably down to verse eight. It says, Jesus sent his 12 harvest hands out with this charge. Don't begin by traveling to some far off place to convert unbelievers. And don't try to be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here bring health to the sick, raise the dead, touch the untouchables, kick out the demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. Quick thoughts, quick thoughts uh, as you uh, had the opportunity, hopefully major majority of you have had the opportunity uh, to at least peruse the, uh, the this uh, this chapter. If not, um, hang on in there because there's, there's a lot in here uh, that you can glean just from the uh, scripture alone. What are some quick things that hit you uh, as you read this text? As you're thinking about what you're going to say, I'm just going to read the first uh, the first paragraph so that it can set the bad drop for our conversation. All the activity of the disciples is subject to the clear precept 
of their Lord. They're not left free to choose their own methods or adapt their own conception of their task. Their work is to be Christ's work, and therefore they are absolutely dependent on the will of Jesus. Happy are they whose duty is fixed by such a precept and who are therefore free from the tyranny of their own ideas and calculations. It sounds like uh, the author, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, is uh, trying to explain what galvanizes, what is the inertia to the commission that has been placed upon believers and followers of Christ. It is so specific. It's down to the very minutia level of detail on not only what to say, but where to go, what to carry, and what not to carry, what the expectations are upon this level of obedience when it comes to evangelistic work. Now, Eugene Peterson, in his text, he, he uh, gives a thematic expression as to many times how even in evangelism, there are uh, inherent distractions that may occur or even uh, uh, emotional disappointments that may occur in that journey of sharing the gospel. So, so Eugene Peterson uh, 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 relays or describes uh, what Jesus says uh, in its simplest form. He says, go to those that are around you that are lost. Don't get so encumbered upon trying to go out beyond farther than what I have told you. What, what are your thoughts on that? How, how did that impact you? Yes, Sandy. Kind of reminds me of the saying, take care of home first. There so it is. Our home is not up to par. How can you help somebody else? Yeah, yeah. It, it also reminded you of Acts 1 and 8 too, didn't it? Acts 1 and 8. Judea, you know, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the world. Yeah, the, the Deacon Phoenix. Is that you? What is? I think uh, uh, who, uh, Deacon Phoenix. Are you online? Last two numbers, forty-six. I, I I am here, Pastor. Okay, okay. I, I thought you were trying to unmute yourself. No, no, I'm here. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, so, uh, Deacon Patricia Owens. It reminds me of that song that says, "Sweep around your own front porch." Yeah. Yeah. What what are <laughs> what are the benefits of starting in a close proximity as opposed to navigating out? What are the benefits of, of starting in a close proximity? Yes, Deacon Patricia Owens. Um I I guess the benefit would be if I touch you then you can touch someone else. Yeah. And I don't have to go to everybody. Right. I can start here. Then you can go around your friends and, and then it, it goes out. It goes out exponentially, if I can right. use that mathematical phrase. There it is. There it is. That's a $20 word. Okay. Okay. There, there, is, there is also a level of familiarity that exists. I am more familiar with those in my close proximity because there is a possibility that I have built a relationship with those in close proximity, okay? I also, and, th and what I'm about to say reminds me of how Nehemiah commissioned individuals to do the work. There is also a level of self-worth in things that are of close proximity to me. I tend to value things that are close to me more than I do the unfamiliar. I bring up Nehemiah because when ne Nehemiah commissioned those to do the work, he had them start in their own area first because he recognized that if I have them start in their own area, they'll really put the energy behind it because folks tend to pour into 
uh, uh, more of a value of what is their own than they do of those of things that are not their own. But then I like what Patricia Owen said because, in essence, sometimes we make we we make this evangelism uh, task more difficult than we need to. Sometimes you just need to just start right where you are and let the 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 will of God do the work. It's almost like a a, a popcorn effect. It, it, if one kernel pops, then it almost seems like the one connected to that one gets a little bit of energy, and then it just pops all over, and it creates a mass combust com combustion. That's what this evangelistic approach is all about. So, so in essence, I I, I tend to like Jesus's approach. Um, but but then the author kind of talks about how there is a danger of not doing things according to the will, work, and way of God, and you becoming a distraction to the call. How is that possible? How is it possible that I can become a distraction to evangelism? How is that possible? I passed, I think, um, Sheila. Mm -hmm. um, I think when we, we become a distraction, when we do things our way, yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of like you say, you know, when you have a true connection, you know, God probably told you to go right. You said, well, let me just go, go a little left. I'm not going to go all the way left. I'm going to go a little left. Right, You right. just said a little left. Has messed up what God has purpose was. I think that happens a lot of times. It does. It does. It does. Great point. Great point. Deacon R.T. Williams. Gotta unmute yourself. Don't forget. Yes, I, I finally got to it. Okay, these uh, messengers, they have been given an order to do as you are told to do, not on your own. So you have certain places to go and certain places not to go. No matter how, if you say the grass might look green on the other side, but you do what you're told to do. Don't go over there. You yeah. come out better. Why, why is it so difficult, though, Deacon R.T. Williams, for us for as us believers, believers to recognize, to recognize this, as this as Jesus's, Jesus's love, love as opposed, as to, opposed his, to his, uh, how can I say this, say his, this, his Demanding, demanding nature. Nature. Come, let me get again. Let me keep my thoughts together here. It's, why is this? Why can't we recognize this instruction as Jesus exemplifying His love for us? Why do we have so much of a challenge with that? We a lot of times we just don't believe. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, as they say. You, you, a lot of people want to be on their own. They just don't believe what somebody else is telling them. And so that, that's, that's the way I see that. I don't know. Yeah, great yeah, great response. Janine, Sister Janine? I think that sometimes we, we do believe, but we get impatient. Right. And um, that's it there. We just get impatient sometimes. Yeah, I think, I think you know, Janine, some, we, we, we fall into the trap of thinking if i if 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 i am the captain in uh the driver's seat i think i could come up with better results than the creator of the world hmm. wow i didn't <laughs> i didn't think that but but, but that's what that, that, that's what we do i mean we we may not mean to do that but that's in essence what we're saying we're saying jesus i, I know what you're saying is the most effective way to spread your gospel but I think I could get better results than you. I mean, look at look at look at Sarah and Abraham. They, okay. they thought they could get better results than God, mm. and they and, and they allowed their age mm -hmm. to be a distraction to the will and might and, and might of God. And what ends up happening, Janine, is when we do that, oh. guess who gets the glory and who does not. Mm. Um, I guess you would get the glory and, and, and God, God does not. not. Yeah, yeah. But then it, with that instance, that was 
it turned out to be um it backfired right yeah yeah wow yeah on page um 206 there's a sentence there that says and this kind of alludes to what i was asking uh deacon uh rt williams kind of lose it says uh hold on let me let me see the work of god cannot be done without due authorization otherwise it is devoid of promise does it therefore follow that the promise and commission are not universally valid both are valid only where god authorizes them but does not the very love of christ constrain us to set no limits to its proclamation now here's what i'm getting at the love of Jesus is something very different from our own zeal and enthusiasms because it adheres, it sticks to its mission. Wow. Many times our zeal, our enthusiasm becomes a distraction to the mission, but God's specific instructions is an, an, ex, an example of the love of Christ and it's guaranteed to stick to the mission, the point, the purpose, the vision, the goal that is being set forth. Deacon of uh, uh, Phoenix. No, 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 Pastor, I'm just listening. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, so, so, so then uh, let, let's go to, uh, let's wrestle with page 207. He says, the proclamation and activity of the messengers are identical with that of Christ himself. To them has been granted a portion of his power. They are cha charged to proclaim the advent of the kingdom of heaven and to confirm their message by conforming signs. And here's the point. They must heal the sick cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and drive out devils. The message becomes an event, and the event confirms the message. The kingdom of God, Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins, the justification of the sinner through faith, all this is identical with the destruction of the devil's power, the healing of the sick, and the raising of the dead that that in essence is saying if we do god's will god's way god gets the victory and the enemy is defeated when we stand outside of the will word and way of god the enemy become puts his foot in the door because we leave a, a, a way for him to infiltrate the proclamation of the apostles is the word of the almighty God, and therefore it is an act, an event, a miracle. It is the one Christ who passes through the land in the person of his 12 messengers and performs his work. The sovereign grace with which they are equipped is the creative and redemptive word of God. Any thoughts? Any thoughts on that before we continue? And then the author makes a transition and he, he, he highlights Matthew chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. He says, get you no gold, no silver, no brass in your purses, no wallet for your journey, neither two coats, nor shoes, nor staff, for the laborer is worthy of his food. Since the authorization and equipment of the messengers is absolutely dependent on the word of Jesus, it is essential that nothing should obscure their royal mission or make it incredible. The messengers are to deliver their testimony to the riches of their Lord in royal poverty. The gifts they have received are no personal possessions, which they could trade for other goods freely you have received. To be a messenger of Jesus Christ confers no personal privileges, no title or power, to power or to the renown. This is true, even where the free messengers of Jesus have turned into regular ministry in the church. So 
what are your thoughts? When you hear that portion, not only of the scripture, but the interpretation from Diedrich Bonhoeffer, how does that run, uh, uh, how does that compare a contrast to our uh, messianic uh, or missionary journey? Do we see this going on today? Janine. All right, if I'm understanding this correctly, I'm, I, I have my Bible open and it says um, to give up everything so you can be solely dependent on God as you're going through um, and evangelizing to people that in, in biblical times. Is that right? Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, I think um, I think you're also uh, uh, relaying what uh, Sister Brown has typed in the comments. She said, last oh. few years ago, you had more messengers than you have today. Yeah. And, but, okay, so in order to evangelize today, um, we, we can't just give up everything. Why not? I mean, I know. <laughs> it's I could be facetious. Why not? It's uncomfortable. I mean, why can't we evangelize and still have some level of comfort and still, I mean, you have to rely on God. Um, and it's a new day. It's a new day, a new time. And it's just because you have these things that make life easier, transportation, education, occupation and all that doesn't mean that you cannot evangelize and, and keep God first if you're totally sincere about what you're doing. I think I think what's what's the underlying current in this Janine uh -huh. is the fact that many times and understand me how I'm saying this and, okay. and, and, and Sandy, you got to help me make sure I communicate this thoroughly. <laughs> many, many times we think that we must have a lot of bells and whistles and pomp and circumstances and gimmicks to compel men, women, boys and girls to come to Christ. What's inherent in this text, as we layer into our level of modernity today, mm -hmm. is Jesus saying to us in 2021, the best way to exemplify or compel men, women, boys, and girls to come to Christ is not the bells and whistles you see today. The best way to do it is to live it before men and women, boys and girls, to be a living example as opposed to trying to manufacture or create gimmicks to compel people to commit to Christ. Because what, what does bells, whistles, and pomp and circumstances and gimmicks do? It only compels people to be committed to pomp and circumstances, mm -hmm. gimmicks, bells, mm -hmm. and whistles. Because okay. the more they come, the more I'm interested. And what happens is those are the distractions. Yeah. Where if yeah. I see Janine in the midst of turmoil, mm. praying, in the midst of tragedy, praying, in the midst of jubilant excitement, not forgetting to pray. That's a living example of a Christ, Christ uh, filled life. And yes. you mentioned jubilant though. If you, yeah. if you see Janine jubilant being happy and praying yeah. and crying and worshiping God, yep. jubilant, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. so you can have that and you don't i hear what you're saying i mean they they people need it's not about your material stuff it's about what you live in your life to serve christ and you and people can see that there it is sandy yeah i think you guys said it i was just going to say that your material possessions are the distraction so i was thinking like you come into town and you're supposed to I'm going to share the word with me, but all I see is your fur, your jewelry, your gators. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. all I'm going to do. I want to know how you got that. So I can get that too. So I, I was going to share that. I think your possessions are mm -hmm. 
question and not like give them away. It's just don't feel that you need these things in order to be able to go out and, you know, spread the word. You don't. Yeah. You, you have heard me say, uh, Sandy and others often, I don't know if a lot of these pastors and preachers across America are really going to look forward to heaven because it's not about them. It's not about having a congregation. It's not about walking into a room and people lauding you and lifting you up. Everyone's focus and attention will be on the Christ, the living Savior. And so, I, I you know, I, I, I just cringe at what we are doing today as if that is needed to compel people. That's not the work that we are called to do. And that's not, not what I was saying either. I, oh, I I'm not saying you are. We're saying that. Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, because Lord knows, I was just thinking about being, thinking about the disciples, how they gave up their jobs and all that. They left and, you know, went to evangelize with, well, went to learn from Jesus. Yeah. And then I fast forwarded to today um, that you can still get your message across without having to give up everything. Yeah. Um, your occupation and Maybe I was being a little too uh, specific, but <laughs> the, yeah, the you, furs you, you, and all of that, yeah, I agree with, with with you both on that. It's not about the material stuff. Yeah. It's about your sincerity and your love for God and, and the display of your love for God through your actions and, and your positive actions. There it is. Now, now, um, on page 208, I hope you all had the opportunity to look up, not this $20 word, but this was a $40 word uh -oh. that I have yet to, uh, uh, I, I looked up the definition, I just couldn't pronounce it. And I probably should have used the app on my phone uh, to try to pronounce it. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 letters in it. Oh. Plenty pot. Plenty potent potentaries. Potentiaries. Can you just spell it, please? For the record. P -L -E P -L -E -N -I -P -O -T -E -N -T -I -A -R -I -E -S. It's on page 208. I, I still didn't get the book, my procrastination. Oh, yeah. It, so it's it's a big word. Sandy, did you look that word up? <laughs> yeah, do. it it says plenipotentiary. There it is. Plenty of oh, potentiaries. Okay. There it is. I'm sorry. Come on, man. Pastor. Yeah. Uh, RT and I spoke about it today, and I was going to let him define it. Uh, RT, are you going to give the definition? I knew. I knew he'd have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you, what, what it means. <laughs> I'm sorry. What it, What it means is that it's an ambassador with with power. Right. When When Jesus gave power to the disciples to go in, do all that he did. Yep. This is the word, the word that, 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 that describes, that describes them. them. Right, right. You know, you they, know they, they were, they were go ahead. I'm sorry. ambassadors ahead. with great, with uh, all power. And that's yep. what the word means. Okay, okay. Let, we're gonna have Deacon RT uh, give us, some, give us uh, uh, some more to it. I think you hit it out the park though. But go ahead, Deacon RT. You gotta unmute yourself. Okay, yes. I had a problem sometime. I don't know if he's he touching something too hard or what. But anyway, Brother Phoenix mostly summed it up. He says, a diplomat agent having full power or uh, authority. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's, for instance, your, your president, <laughs> he might have a diplomat. He might send to a foreign country before he get there. Yeah. He send his diplomat there to smooth out things and then send for him if necessary. Yep. I, I think that's the way I see that. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Okay, so let me let me let me read what uh, the author is uh, how he's using that, um, and it's on two. It says the point is that as they go forth to be the plenty potentiaries of His Word, Jesus enjoins strict poverty upon them. Note that this is an explicit command, and that the possessions of the disciples are allowed 
to take with them are uh, specified down to the last detail. They are not to go about like beggars or call attention to themselves, nor are they to burden other people like parasites. They are to go forth in the battle dress of poverty, taking as little with them as a traveler who knows he will get bored and lodging with friends at the end of the day. This shall be an expression of their faith, not in men, but in their heavenly father who sent them and will care for them. It is this that will make their gospel credible for they proclaim the coming kingdom of God, the same freedom which informs their service allows them to accept board and lodging, not as charity, but as due reward for their laborers. Jesus calls his messengers workmen. What are your thoughts on that? How'd that impact you? He's talking about the disciples, right? Or are we talking about today? Well, we could be talking about both. Could be talking about both. Because... If you, if you notice, Janine, there are various uh, passages of scripture where Jesus talks about the horrors and dangers of bringing attention to yourself, even when you're praying. Jesus says, don't, don't, don't pray like those who use superfluous words or those that have long prayers or those who stand and, and have people acknowledge and, 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 and admire them, they've already received their reward. But when you pray, go into your secret right. closet. Mm -hmm. Just, same as when you're fasting, don't disfigure your face. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So even when it comes to evangelism, folks will utilize the the call or the commission of sharing the gospel as an as an opportunity to bring attention to themselves and that's what jesus does not want to occur because the people you are evangelizing to will become dependent on you mm -hmm. and not on god amen okay but when you are dependent it, it dependent on god god calls his messengers work women and work men interesting so be very humble when you're out evangelizing say that yeah and, and uplift god and edify god and all those yeah looking at up to god yeah all right so let's let's um let, let's jump to page 210 oops their proclamation is clear and concise. They simply announce that the kingdom of God has drawn nigh and summon men to repentance and faith. They come with the full authority of Jesus of Nazareth. They deliver a command and make an offer with the support of the highest credentials. And that is all. The whole message is staggering in its simplicity and clarity. And since the cause brooks no delay, there is no need for them to enter in any further discussion to clear the ground or persuade their hearers. I like what the author is saying there. The author is saying, give it to them straight, no chaser. <laughs> give it to them straight. This is this is the it's it, it reminds it when I read that it reminded me of John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist, he said, the you know uh, the kingdom of God is coming. You need to be uh, forgiven of your sins. Just straight, no chaser, no hooping, no hollering, nothing. Like the NIV. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's plain. Yeah, yeah. Pastor, I think one of the messages too, when you say make it simple, mm -hmm. uh, make a choice. Right. Do you want the kingdom, or do you want the or do you want hell? There is wow. no in between. 
You know, yeah. so again, it's, it's a simple choice, a, a yeah. simple decision you have to make. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, anyone anyone what else? You want hell. It, it, yeah, th I mean that, that that's, that's the simplest. Go, go ahead, Janine. What was you gonna say? I'm, no, I'm just hearing. I'm, I'm I agree with Dick and Phoenix. That was just either you want heaven or you want hell. Plain and simple. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That that met, in essence, what Deacon Phoenix is saying is through the lens of Deacon Dietrich Bonhoeffer is that message still works. <laughs> that is the most effective yeah. message you could ever deliver. It's either heaven or hell. It's either salvation or eternal damnation. You can add fluff, cream, bright lights, all that, all you want to. But at the end of the day, it's lowest common denominator. Denomination is a choice that that individual has to make. The unfortunate reality is our level of Protestantism and and and, and evangelical ism have added too much fluff to the essentials of Christian doctrine and cause people to not make a decision. And that's the unfortunate reality. In the middle of, um, what page is this? In the middle of 210, the author says, uh, through uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 7. Today, if ye shall hear his voice, harden not your hearts. That is evangelical preaching. Is this ruthless speed? Nothing could be more ruthless than to make men and women think there is still plenty of time to mend their ways. To tell men and women that they, that the cause is urgent and that the kingdom of God is at hand is the most charitable and merciful act that we can perform, the most joyous news that we can bring. The messenger cannot wait and repeat it to every man and women, woman in their own language. God's language is clear enough. It is not for the messenger to decide who will hear and who will not, for only God knows who is worthy. And those who are worthy will hear the word when the disciple proclaims it. Wow. That is evangelical preaching at its best. If, if that is not ground, if, if evangelical preaching is not grounded on individuals hearing the truth and then, then forcing the, the, the receiver of the message to ask themselves a question, what do I do with this? Then it's just a great speech. And sometimes not even a great speech. All right. But woe to the city and woe to the house that re which rejects the messenger of Christ. They will incur a dreadful judgment. Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities of unchastity and perversion, will be judged more graciously than those city in Israel who reject the word of Jesus. Vice and sin may be forgiven according to the word of Jesus. But the man or woman who rejects the word of salvation has thrown away their last chance. To refuse to believe in the gospel is the worst sin imaginable. And if that happens, the messengers can do nothing but leave the place. Man, please, if, if you don't get nothing out of what I've shared today, that right there is a, an instruction for us. If we just share the, the, the straight up gospel, which is if you hear your if you hear his voice, harden out your hearts, and it is rejected. G Jesus says, do what? Well, he says, knock the dust off your shoes and keep stepping. All right. Amen. Because the worst sin is to reject the gospel. 
what more can you do when you when an individual says i refuse to believe what more can you do that's the scripture i thought about yeah. but I, I mentioned that once before and i think i mentioned it at the wrong time but it was on point this time yeah that's it right there what can you do but that and thank god there is a, a scripture for that because what else can you do you can't make people listen yeah Dietrich Bonhoeffer says in this text, but the disciples must not force any issue contrary to or beyond the word of Christ. Their commission, listen, their commission is not a heroic struggle, a financial pursuit, or a grand idea of a good cause. That is why they stay only where the word stays. And if it is rejected, they will be rejected with it shake the dust off their feet as a sign of the curse which awaits that place let me read that one more again but the disciples must not force any issue contrary to or beyond the word of christ their commission our commission is not a heroic struggle a financial pursuit or a grand idea or a good cause that is why they stay only where the word stays. And if it is rejected, they will be rejected with it. And shake off the dust from their feet as a sign of the curse which awaits that place. This curse will not harm the disciples, but the peace they brought returns to them. This is a great consolation for ministers of the church where they are troubled because their work seems void of success. You must not be depressed for what others refuse to will prove an even greater blessing for yourself. To such the word said, the Lord says, they have scorned it, so keep it for yourself. Deacon R.T. Williams. Uh, referring to the where it says, as ye go forth out of the house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Okay, now, in my opinion, when the, when the messengers went there, they did not accomplish what they went there for because the ones that's in the house of city, they wouldn't listen, they didn't pay attention to what he said. So in this uh, dust off your feet, that means they went, they did what they supposed to, but in my opinion, they didn't they didn't get the results. And uh, but that was back in those days when they dust off your feet, but today, when people go out and they don't get the results, they slap their hands together and then they say, God help. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's uh, where I see that uh, dusting off your feet. They just didn't accomplish uh, what they went there for. Now, was I kind of in line with that? Or how, how would you say that? No, I, 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 that's not your opinion. That's true. <laughs> that's, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's, that's the one part. All right. Anyone else before we close? Quick thoughts. What are some closing thoughts you have uh, by this lesson? This is a tough one. It's another reason you have to live your life to live your life for Christ. And like you said, when people people need to see you in turmoil and praying, but sometimes if, if people remember you before. They might not want to hear nothing you have to say because they feel like, oh, this was you before, <laughs> you know. So it may be a little more difficult to get a message across. Um, that is a this is a good reason that says that you need to live your life for Christ, yeah. and people need to see that if you want to start evangelizing to folks, they need to see the change in you or see what God has done for you. Right. And sometimes they still don't want to hear that, though. You know, so yeah, yeah. there we go with the dusting of the feet. There it is. All right. Anyone else? All right. Looks like uh, what what next week uh, is the 29th. And our last lesson of this book, of this session is chapter 24, The Suffering of 
the messenger, the suffering of the messenger. Real excited about uh, that particular lesson as we bring it to a close. There are some who still get joy in spreading the gospel. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. amazing lesson. Um, we are uh, going to look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 through 25. That's our lesson, the suffering of messengers. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed uh, this particular lesson. And I hope it made an uh, made an mm -hmm. indelible mark on mm -hmm. you personally. Uh, it galvanized you. It encouraged you even in your spreading of the gospel. If there's nothing else, thank you so much for uh, attending uh, and, and, and sh sharing your thoughts as well as uh, 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 being a, an intent listener. Um, and, and I'm sure that uh, this word, this discussion uh, will not return mm -hmm. void. Uh, if there's nothing else, uh, let us look to the Lord in prayer as we close. Uh, Lord, we are grateful uh, again, uh, just for yeah. the presence of your Holy Spirit, uh, which illuminated us uh, in this journey of you reminding us of not only uh, the importance of the word, uh, but how uh, it's important that we live uh, this life. And so, Lord, we pray, we ask that you forgive us, Lord, uh, in those areas in which we do not surrender our all to you. Uh, Lord, we're grateful for the calling and the commission you have on our life. Lord, we ask a special blessing on Sheila Tyus, uh, uh, Evelyn uh, Williams, Dora Brown, Janine Davis, uh, William Fenix, Patricia Owens. Lord, we ask a special blessing on R.T. Williams, Sandy, as well uh, as Lu uh, Sister LaRue, Commissioner LaRue, Michaela, uh, uh, and, and Lord, uh, bless uh, our church in a mighty way. Thank you, Lord, for just uh, blessing our church. And Lord, we're excited about what you're doing in the life of our church. Uh, but Lord, we're more excited about having a relationship with you. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with great joy. To the only wise God be glory, honor, dominion, and power, now and forever. Let us all say amen and amen. 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 Bless you, everybody. We're going to have a Merry Christmas. Yes, have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas.